Uh, Senator Feinstein's uh, counterpart on the Senate Intelligence Committee is the ranking Republican on that committee, Saxby Chambliss. He joins us now from Moultrie, uh, Georgia. Uh, Senator, did you uh, get any uh, information this morning? Did anybody uh, brief you about this new information that he was kept in a cage and that he, uh, 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 you know, tried to escape from his Taliban captors? Uh, this all comes as uh, what I would think is uh, big news. I would think this might uh, change uh, the views that people have uh, if they had known about this. Well, just like Diane, um, I've heard rumors about the escape uh, as far as keeping him in a cage and whatnot. Uh, I read about it in the press this morning. Nobody has made any effort to contact me um, from the administration. But then, you know, I learned about this after the fact. Diane and I were both called on Monday night after Bergdahl was released on Saturday and uh, told that it had happened. So th this administration has acted very strangely about this, Bob, and it's kind of puzzling as to why they did not let us know in advance that this was going to happen. Well, this uh, latest information, uh, we were told by uh, officials at the Pentagon today, there was no confirmation uh, of what Bergdahl is apparently telling people in the hospital there. Uh, but they they said uh, we wouldn't wave you off from that story. In other words, uh, nobody was saying, hey, this is dead wrong. This never happened. Uh, does that suggest to you that, uh, well, I don't know what it suggests. A, a couple of things I would think maybe they're trying to check this out. Maybe they're not quite sure of what they've been told. Uh, what, it, what would be your assessment? Well, I think there are going to be a lot of things that Bergdahl um, tells the, the Army and the medical folks that he's talking to now that um, Bob is going to be very difficult to validate. But it, that's not to say they're not absolutely true. But we weren't there. We have nobody who was on the inside. So we don't know exactly what happened in his life over the last several years except um, we do know he was captured and he's been in the Taliban's hands for uh, these number of years. So I just suspect that you're going to have uh, number one rumors coming out about what he may be saying, but then other actual statements that he may make that are going to be very difficult to validate. And again, that's not to say they're not true. Do you think uh, the administration was right in uh, withholding uh, information about this, uh, Senator? Uh, at one point I was told yesterday, well, we don't ever brief the uh, uh, Congress uh, when there's an operation underway. Uh, and so uh, then there was another report that he was in bad health and they had to, to do this quickly because of his health. Uh, reports this morning are uh, he's making a very good recovery, at least physically. Uh, they say he's now wearing his uniform up and around, walking around the hospital, talking to people there. But uh, the report, at least in the Times, is but he's not ready, I guess you would say, emotionally. Uh, he has not talked to his parents yet, as far as we know. Well, uh, two things I would say. Number one, I can't imagine anybody in the administration being able to look the American public in the eye and saying we never brief members of Congress on ongoing operations. The classic example of that is the bin Laden operation. Diane and I knew for months and months what was uh, suspected relative to the location of bin Laden. We had a pretty good idea of what they were going to do, and I'll never forget the phone call I got from an excited Leon Panetta telling me that uh, bin Laden had been taken down. Those types of things are briefed to us on a regular basis. Not a day goes by, Bob, that I don't get briefed on some classified aspect of our intelligence community, a lot of which is ongoing operations. Uh, secondly, when Bergdahl was let go, what we were told and what the public was told is that because of a video that was made apparently in December of last year and viewed by the Department of Defense in January of this year that Bergdahl looked like he had lost 10 to 15 pounds, he was in poor health, and they were concerned that if they did not make this exchange that his life would be in danger as a result of bad health. Well, no intelligence uh, supported that. And now they come back, and because he is in decent health, considering where he's been, they ha they've changed their story. They said, well, 
No, we suspect his life may be in danger if word got out of this pending uh, uh, possible trade that his life may be in danger. Again, I can just tell you there is no intelligence to support that and Director Clapper is, has already made that same statement. So uh, it, the whole scenario surrounding this is very, very strange. All right. Well, Senator, we're going to uh, leave it there. Uh, thank you for being with us this morning. We're going to talk to uh, Tom sure. Friedman and Peggy Noonan and David Rode, who himself, while a reporter, was captured and was in captivity for some time uh, at the, by, in, in the Taliban, by the Taliban. So we'll be back with all that in just a minute.